Hi all. Module 4 is about relational database design. So in module 1, we have already seen how to represent data using entity relationship diagrams. And in the second module, we have already seen how to convert the CR diagrams into tables or relations. Now in this module, what we'll be learning is we'll be checking these relations and we'll be finding out whether these relations are good or bad. If it is a bad relation, we have to make it into a good relation. So how to make it into a good relation? That's what we are going to see in this module. So module 4 is covered in chapter 14.1 to chapter 14.5 of Navade, 7th edition, and chapter 15.1 and chapter 15.2 of the same book. So in this first part of this lecture, I'll be dealing with this informal design guidelines for relational database, then functional de dependencies, then we'll be seeing about normal forms based on primary keys, and then we'll be seeing general normal form definitions for second normal form and third normal form and BCNF. So in this video lecture, we'll be seeing only informal design guidelines for relational database. So what do you mean by this relational database design? So it's, it's nothing but grouping of attributes to form good relation schemes. We will see what do you mean by this good relation schema and all. So what we have to do is we have to group attributes such that it forms good relations. So there are mainly two schemas. We have already seen these different types of schemas. We have logical or user view of schema and also we have storage or base level schema. So design is mainly concerned with this base relations schema. So logical you know how users perceive data that we have seen in the ER diagrams. Now the second thing is how to represent this data internally or how to represent this data inside the hard disk or secondary storage. So that is what we will be seeing in this chapter. How to design this base relations. So what do you mean by this good base relations? What are the criteria to be a good base relation? So mainly, why do we design this database is to reduce this redundancy. Redundancy. Redundancy means we are if we are not designing these tables properly, then there will be redundant information or repeat the information, same information will be repeated in different tables or the same table itself will be repeating the same information. So it is actually a wastage of memory or storage space is wasted. And there will be several problems if we are storing it redundant information in tables. So we have to make good relations. So how to make this good relations? That's what we are going to study in this chapter. So database design. So this is an introduction to database design. So there are there are mainly two strategies in database design. One is bottom-up design methodology. It is also known as design by synthesis. So in bottom-up design strategy, this starts with the relationships among individual attributes. So we will be finding out the attributes that will be there in our table and we will try to group these attributes or we will try to find the relationship between these individual attributes and then we form relations or tables. That is known as bottom-up design methodology. So this methodology is not usually followed in relational database systems. So what we follow is our top-down design methodology or it is also called as, uh, it's also known as uh, design by analysis. So it starts with a number of groupings of attributes into relations that exist together naturally. So this is this is what we have done in the previous module. We have already designed some relations. So we have already designed some ER diagrams and from that ER diagrams we have mapped it into relations. So we have some basic tables now. Now from that we will be finding out whether they are good relations and then we will be applying these strategies, what we learned in this module. 
we are, in this chapter, we'll be learning some techniques to convert into good relations. So usually in relational database, we'll be following this top-down design methodology, or it is known as design by analysis. So ultimately, the finally, what we'll be having after this is, will be a set of relations itself. We have a set of relations now. We have converted those ER diagrams into some tables, and we have a set of tables now. And again, we will be modifying these tables. And again, we will be modifying these tables or relations, and we will again get a, some set, another set of tables. So this set of tables should have two properties. One is, first one is, in, it should preserve all the information that is there. Information preservation should be there. And second property is redundancy should be minimized. So first thing is information preservation. So if there is some information that is there, uh, which was there in the analysis stage, that information should be preserved even after doing this design. For example, if you are storing some uh, address of some person, then that address should be there even after we design these tables. None of the information should be lost. And also we have to minimize this redundancy. That is, if there is some redundant information, we have to minimize it. We cannot completely avoid or remove this redundancy from relations, but we can minimize this redundancy. So how to minimize this redundancy? All these things we'll be learning in this chapter. So in the first part of this session, we will be learning about the informal design guidelines for relational database designs. So mainly we have four informal design guidelines. First informal guideline is making sure that the semantics of the attributes is clear in the schema. So whatever be the attributes we have, the semantics or the meaning of these attributes should be clear in the schema. We will be seeing this in, de in detail. The second informal guideline is we have to reduce the redundant information in tuples or reduce the redundant information in rows of our tables. Third informal guideline is we have to reduce the null values in tuples. Fourth guideline is to disallow the possibility of generating spurious tuples. So we will see all these four uh, guidelines in detail in the next sessions. First one, first guideline is semantics of the relation attributes. So first guideline is informally, each tuple in a relation should represent one entity or relationship instance. So this is, a, uh, this is guideline one, informally. This is an informal guideline. Formal design we will be seeing in the second session. So these are some of the informal guidelines that we should follow in our relations or tables. So informally, each tuple or each row in a relation should represent one entity or one relationship instance. So we should not represent multiple things in a single row. So if you are representing, for example, if you are representing some student's table, if you are representing some person's Table. For example, if you are representing Akshay Jews, that's the usual example that we follow in our class. Akshay Jews, if you are taking, if you are storing Akshay Jews data in a single row, then that row should contain only Akshay Jews data. Some, it should not contain some other person's data in that table. So informally, each tuple in a relation should represent only one entity or relationship in instance. So each row should, repre should be representing only a single entity or a single kind of entity or it should be a single instance relationship instance. It should not represent multiple instances or it should not represent multiple things. It should be representing only a particular thing in a relation. So this is an informal guideline. For example, uh, attributes of entities should not be mixed in the same relation. For example, if you have uh, a company database that we have already seen, we have different tables, employee, departments, projects. We should not mix up these attributes. Employee table should contain only employee attributes or department table should contain only department attributes or project table should contain only these project attributes. 
we should not add this department attributes to this employee table or we should not mix this pro department attributes with this project attributes we will see what is the problem in mixing up of these attributes in the next session in the next slide we will be seeing this so only foreign keys should be used to refer to other entities so if you want to refer some entities if you want to refer one entity to another entity for example if you want to refer employee entity to department entity then we should use only we should use foreign keys to refer these entities we should not mix up these attributes entity and relationship attributes attributes should be kept apart as much as possible that is these entity attributes should be separate from this relationship attributes and one entity attribute should be separated from another entity attribute we should not mix up these attributes so that is guideline number 1 so informally each tuple in a relation should represent one entity or a relationship instance it applies to individual relations and also their attributes so this is an example this this example we already see so if you see this example in this example employee this is one relation employee this is another department relation this is department locations relations this is project table this is works on table so if you see this employee table if you see the attributes in this employee table this employee table attributes are belong to this employee type only e name is of is for a particular employee SSN is for a particular employee. Birth date is for an employee. Address is for an employee. And we use a foreign key D number to refer this department. So we are not. We should not mix up these attributes. Employee table should contain only employee attributes, and department table should contain only department attributes. So this is the first informal guideline. So this is a table. This is a table at a particular instance. so this is a extension what we uh, have already seen this is an extension of the table employee table will con contain all those employee uh, tables so if we so if we see each row this one smith john b this social security number belongs to the smith itself or this address belongs to smith so each row will be representing each relationship instance or each entity instance so that is what we mean by guideline one so each row should contain only a particular entity or particular relationship so this is an example for violation of this guideline one so if you are making a table like this so if you are making a table like m department m department so in this m department we have e name ssn birth date address and we have mixed up some attributes from department table also d number d name and manager assistant actually this these attributes belong to a different table but in this table we have included in the employee table itself so this is violation of guideline one because we are mixing up two different entities or this is also a violation of uh, guideline one here we have social security number p number hours e name p name and p location so we have mixed up the project attributes also you leave this arrow marks fd1 fd2 and fd3 we'll be learning all these things later so if you see this table also this is also a violation of guideline one because we have mixed up the attributes of project table p name p location and p number belongs to project relation so we have mixed up with this employee table so this is clear violation of guideline one then second guideline it is about redundant information in tuples and update anomalies so we'll be learning about what what is the problem with redundant information in tuples if you are storing redundant information in rows what is the problem and we will be seeing the anomalies the different anomalies in relation to that so in this if you are storing information uh, redundant if you are storing redundant information then there can be different problems one one main problem one major problem is uh, uh, quite natural it is we will have storage wastage so we will simply store we are simply storing redundant information or repeating we are storing repeated 
we are storing information in a repetitive manner. So two rows may contain the same. So it is actually wastage of data, a wastage of storage. And second important thing, it can cause problems with update anomalies. So this is a main problem if we store uh, redundant information. It can have update anomalies. So update anomalies are mainly divided into three types. One is insertion anomaly, second is deletion anomalies, and third is modification anomalies. So if we store uh, redundant information in tables, then it can have insertion anomalies, then deletion anomalies can occur, and also modification anomalies can occur. We will see what is this insertion anomaly, deletion anomaly, and modification anomaly in the next slide. So this is the first thing, insertion anomaly. So this is actually a violation of guideline one itself. You can see that uh, we have a table uh, called M department, which consists of a name, social security number, birth date, address, and we have mixed with some attributes from department table also, D number, D name, and the manager SSN, the manager of that department. So what happens if you are using this table? It contains a redundant information. If you see this table, uh, we are repeating this information that department number five, department, if you check this department number five, the name of that department is research. If you see, we have repeatedly stored that information in three rows. We have three rows with the same department number and we are repeatedly storing that the name of that department is research and the manager SSN is 3344 and 45. So we are redundantly storing this information. We are redundantly storing that department name is research for department number 5 and the department manager SSN value is this thing. And also if you see this administration, it is of department number 4 and we are storing that redundant information. So what happens if we store this redundant information? An insertion anomaly can occur. So insertion anomaly is an anomaly which occurs when we try to insert some data into this table. So if you try to insert some a new employee into this table, for example, if you want to insert a new employee named some John or some James into this table, what happens is that you have to enter e name, employee name should be entered, then you have to enter social security number, you have to enter the birth date, you have to enter address, then you have to enter uh, department number, okay, you let it be, he belongs to research department. Then next thing you have to enter is you have to enter the department name and department manager SSN also. So what happens is that you are entering a new data into this table. So this and whatever you enter should be consistent with the existing data. So if you are entering department number five, then you should enter research in this in the same number of uh, or you should use the same capital letters or block letters, whatever you have entered in the previous value that should be entered here also. So it should be consistent with the already existing data or that manager assessment again you have to enter the same value if you if there is some error in entering this value then everything that data will be wrong so that is known as insertion anomaly so you have to repeatedly enter the uh, uh, same data again and again if there is some spelling mistake in this research department it will become some other department it may not be the research department that is already stored in the data so that is a problem with insertion so this is known as insertion anomaly. So if you are storing like this, if you are splitting this table into employee table like this and department table like this, then this insertion anomaly does not occur because if you want to enter an employee data, you can simply enter the employee data. You have to enter only the department number. You need not enter who is the, what is the department name or you should not enter the SSN value of the department manager. So another type of error can occur or anomaly can occur in this table. Another error or anomaly that can occur in this table is if you want to create a new department in the company, if you want to create a new department, for example, if you want to create a new computer science department in this 
uh, table or IT department in this table, you cannot enter insert that thing into this table because if you want to enter uh, the department details, you need to have some employee or you have to enter an employee details also. If there is no employee who is working in that department, it's not possible to enter because here social security number is the primary key of this table. So if you want to enter the uh, department detail, you have to enter the social security number. And the social security number belongs to an employee. So an employee should be assigned to a particular department. Then only we can insert that department details. So that is a problem with uh, redundant information. So if you are storing something like this, Insertion anomaly can occur. So insertion anomaly is nothing but if you yeah, will be store if you are storing this redundant information, such kind of anomalies can occur. So in order to avoid this kind of anomaly, if we are using this relation employee and department table, then there won't be any problem. If you want to enter a new employee, it can be entered into this employee table. If you want to enter a uh, department detail, you can directly enter into this department table. So this is insertion anomaly. This is the first anomaly that can occur when we store this redundant information. This is another example for insertion anomaly. Consider the relation employee project. This will consist of employee number, project number, E name, P name, and number of others. So we have mixed up this employee attributes and project attributes into a single table. So here also insertion anomaly can occur. We cannot insert a project. We cannot insert a project into this table unless an employee is assigned to it. If we have not assigned an, an employee to a project, then we cannot insert any project details into this table. Or conversely, we cannot insert an employee unless he or she is assigned to a project. So this is known as insertion anomaly. Then next second type of anomaly that can occur in redundant information or when we store redundant information is delete anomaly deletion anomaly so for example we can see the same employee department table this is the table these two are the attributes which we are storing some redundant information so what happens if we delete this borg james c from this table so this is the borg james c row so if you are deleting this employee from this table, what happens? So what happens is, this is the only employee, Borg James C is the only employee who is working in headquarters, Borg 1 or department number 1. There is no other employee who is working in department number 1. So if we try to delete James C, what happens is, is that this department itself gets deleted because there are no other employees working in this department. So that is the problem with deletion. So this table suffers from delete, delete anomaly because if you try to delete this JMC who is the sole employee of a, of a department, then that department itself gets deleted. This is known as delete anomaly. Or if you want to delete some other uh, department. For example, if you want to delete department number 5 uh, from this table, what happens is that all the employees working in that department itself gets deleted. So that is a problem with deletion. If there is, if you are storing this table in this manner, then there can, uh, deletion anomaly can occur. If you try to delete a particular department, then all the employees working on that department will also get, will get deleted. So that is Delete anomaly or delete anomaly. This is another example. Consider the relation employee project. Uh, here we have mixed up employee and project attributes. Employee number, project number, E name, P name, number of hours. So here also delete anomaly can occur. So when a project is deleted from this, it will result in deleting all the employees who work on that project. The same problem. If a project is being deleted, then all the employees who are working on that project itself gets deleted. So all the employee information will be lost. Alternately, if an employee is the sole employee of, on a project, deleting that employee would result in deleting the corresponding project also. The same problem that we have already seen in the department, employee department. So this is known as delete. <coughs> then third type of anomaly that can occur in redundant tables or redundant information tables is modification anomaly. 
modification anomaly. So we can see the uh, we will see the same table, employee department table. Uh, here these two are the redundant information. So what happens? Modification is uh, if we try to modify some data in the table, this anomaly can occur. So if we want to modify the manager of a department, we need to update in all the rows or tuples. That's the problem. So if we want to uh, change the manager of research department, we want to change the manager. We are assigning a new manager to this research department. Then what we have to do is we have to change, we have to go to each row and update the D manager SSN values. If there are 100 rows, which if we have 100 employees working in research department, then we have to go to each each of these 100 rows and modify this manager SSN values. So it is a anomaly. So because we this anomaly occurs because we are storing a uh, redundant information in our table. So this is known as modification anomaly. So this is another example for modification anomaly. Consider this table: employee project, uh, employee. We are storing employee number, project number, e name, p name, and number of hours. So we have already mixed up this employee attributes and project attributes. Here also, this modification anomaly can occur. If we ch try to change the name of a particular project, P1, from billing to customer accounting, what happens is it may cause this update should be done in all the 100 employees who are working on project. So we have to go to each and every row uh, which contains this P1 and we have to modify that billing to customer accounting. So it is a tedious process. So this kind of anomaly is known as modification anomaly. So guideline two says that we have to design the base relation schemas or we have to design these tables so that no insertion, no deletion or modification anomalies are present in the relation. So this is guideline number two. So guideline number two says that we have to design relations or tables such that these three anomalies are not present in these relations. Insertion anomaly should not be there. Deletion anomaly should not be there and also modification anomaly should not be present. So this is guideline number two. Next, third guideline. <coughs> so third guideline, uh, it is about null values in tuples or null values in rows. Guideline P says that relations should be designed such that their tuples will have as few null values as possible. It may not be possible to eliminate all these null values. A guideline 3 says we should uh, design relations uh, such that the tuples or rows will have few null values as possible. Attributes that are null values, null frequently could be placed in separate relations. If you have more than, uh, if there are more than, if a particular attribute have null values in most of the rows, then what uh, this guideline says is we have to place such kind of attributes in a separate table. So reasons for nulls we have already seen in chapter second module I think so. We have already seen the reason for null values is attribute values may not be applicable or invalid or attribute values may be unknown it may not exist. We have already seen these examples in the previous module or value known to exist but it may not be unavailable. So these are reasons for null values. We have already seen. For example, uh, the first reason for null value is attribute uh, not applicable or invalid. We have already seen one example. For example, uh, if previous degrees of a student are stored in a table, there may not be previous degrees for a particular student. So it may be null. Attribute value unknown may be there. For example, uh, for a particular employee, we may not have the birth date of an employee. So it is unknown. It may exist, but it is unknown. So we have to store that null value. In third case, a value known to exist, but unavailable. For example, if you are storing the data of all the students, uh, we try to store the phone number, home phone numbers of all the students. It may exist, but it is not unavailable. It is unavailable now. So it may be available in later cases. So we will be storing null values in this. So guideline 3 says we should design relations uh, such that there will be the null values will be as few as possible. 
Then fourth one is generation of spurious tuples. We have to avoid spurious tuples. We will see what you mean by the spurious tuples. So we have to avoid the spurious tuples at any cost. That's what we'll see in this uh, fourth guideline. So bad relations, bad designs for a relation database may result in erroneous uh, results for certain join operations. So lossless join property is used to guarantee meaningful relation, uh, results for join operations. So uh, guideline number four states that the relation should be designed to satisfy the lossless join condition. No spurious tuple should be generated by doing a natural join of any relations. So we will see what is this uh, lossless join and what this natural join operation and what is this spurious tuple. So bad design will result in lossless join calculation. So what we do in database design is we have already mentioned that in top down design, top down design what we do is we will start from a, some base relations and we try to decompose the relations or we try to split it into two or three relations. If we have five relations in the initial stage, it will be decomposed into six or seven in the next stage. So when we decompose in these relations and later we, when we do some queries, we may have to perform this natural join operation. We have already seen this natural join operation. So we have to join two or three tables together and we have to take some data from those tables. So when we split these tables and again when we try to join these tables and we try to uh, acquire some data from this table, then spurious tuples will come. Spurious tuples means unwanted data will come. I will show with an example. For example, uh, we have a relation like this M project, which consists of SSN, P number, hours, E name, P name, and P location. So, this is a bad relation because we have already uh, seen this. We have mixed up uh, employee tables, employee attributes, and also project attributes in a single table. So, this is a bad relation. So in order to make it into a good relation, if we decompose, we will be make it, making it into two tables. We will be storing M locations in one table, E name, P location, M project in another table. This is also a bad relation, but we have decomposed into two relations. So in top down design, what we do is if we have a relation, we try to make it into a good relation by decomposing into two or three tables. So we have, we try to decompose and we have obtained these two tables. But this, these two tables are also bad. So we will see why these two tables are bad. <coughs> For example, if we store this data, uh, we have two tables, M locations and M project. If you see the data in these two tables, M locations will contain this data and M project will contain this data. So, if we want to uh, retrieve some data, we may have to join these two tables. We have already seen this natural join operation. So, in natural join, what we will be, we will be using some attribute based on some condition. We will be equating to some value and we will be joining these two tables and we will be seeing some, uh, we will be seeing or we will be retrieving some data from those joined tables. So if we want, if we are trying to join this table based on, if you perform, you see the, the bottom, we can see the natural, if we perform natural join to the tables in M project one and M locations, that is the, the previous tables, for SSN equal to this value, then we will get this table. So this is a natural join operation. If you perform natural join operation, uh, based on the condition SSN equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then you will obtain this table. This is a table that is obtained. So this is this is a bad table because if you check these values, we have marked some tables with asterisk values. These are all spurious tuples or spurious rows because actually this uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, social security number belongs to Smith John. So if you see these tuples, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7 is for English Joys or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, again it is for English Joys. Here it is for Wong Franklin. So these are all wrong information. 
this information this information was not present in the original relation this if you check this thing social security number 12347 belongs to switch on in the original table if you check the data this 123456 belongs to switch on social security number you have already seen social security number is unique and it belongs to a particular employee only so if you perform this natural drawing operation you can see that we have generated some spurious tuples so, so this spurious tuples are represented in uh, storing uh, using asterisk symbol so all these are spurious tuples so if you try to retrieve some data from this join operation after performing this join operation it will result in wrong information we will get only really wrong information if we try to get the social security number of uh, english joys it will be given as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 but this social security number actually belongs to smith john b so this is known as uh, lossless join operation so <clears throat> so lossless join property should be there lossless join we'll see this lossless join in 15 chapter so uh, at this point of time you just see that when we split it to decompose into different tables and if you try to perform a natural join operation and if you try to generate that table if spurious tuples are added then it is a bad design so we have to avoid this spurious tuples so this generation of spurious tuple should be avoided at any cost that is the fourth guideline this is also the uh, an informal guideline we will see this uh, formal way of finding out this uh, lossless join and all these things will be seen in the next so spurious tuples these are two important properties the non additive or lossless join of the corresponding join should be there and all the functional dependency should be preserved when we decompose these tables we will see this in the next chapter so at present you have to see uh, you have to learn only what is this spurious table so when we perform this if we decompose this into two or three relations and if we try try to perform this natural join operation this kind of spurious tuples may be generated that is unwanted tuples or unwanted rows may be generated in the tables so these kind of rows should be avoided we will see in detail in the chapter 15 so this is a thing that we have seen this uh, chapter we have seen the anomalies that cause redundant work to be done uh, it causes wastage of storage because of storing this null information and also we have seen this uh, invalid or spurious data uh, when we perform this join operation this is the thing we have learned so this is the first thing we have learned we have learned the informal mainly the informal guidelines in this side. so first informal guideline is uh, each row should represent only a single type of entity or single instance entity instance if we are storing the details of akshay jyotis in a row then it should contain only the details of akshay jyotis in a single row we should not mix up two or three tables together we should not uh, mix up employee and department table together those kind of things should be avoided that's guideline number 1 then in guideline number 2 we have seen uh, are these anomalies when we store this random information this type of anomalies can occur <clears throat> so we should avoid this kind of insertion deletion all these anomalies should be avoided and third uh, third guideline we have seen is we should minimize the uh, null values in our table and fourth guideline is uh, we should preserve this we should satisfy this lossless join condition we will learn in the next chapter so that's all about first part of this session we will be seeing functional dependencies in the next slide thank you